Hey grid 11, welcome to educate. Let us do now the human neural network system. Let's try to answer this question. This question is going to be really simple and quick to do. Let's just um, look and analyze. So now the diagram below represents the human urinary system. Remember the urinary system is the one responsible for producing urine while filtering the blood. So here in this diagram we can just uh, start analyzing and when you're analyzing you can see that here uh, there is an air moving upward showing that here the blood is leaving the kidneys and here there is an air moving downwards showing that the blood is entering the kidneys so these arrows really tell a lot if we trace well what's happening here because if we sort of track here you can see that this tube this tube here this tube here you can see that as it moves down here it goes into the kidney so it means that there is blood moving into the kidney and we know that uh, blood always moves into the kidney so that it can be filtered right so you can say that this is coming from the iota remember that the oxygenated blood that has got waste products always comes from the heart the iota specifically so Please, uh, let's get used to that. So B is actually the iota. And then now it uh, comes in inside, inside, and then in the kidney, it becomes filtered. And when it gets filtered in the kidney, what will happen? It will leave through the what? The renal vein. You can see that it's leaving now. It's leaving now. And then there it goes again. So I can see that here there is something we have already analyzed just before we have started answering the questions. So let us carefully mind these arrows because they're very important. So let's go to the first question, uh, question 1.5.1. So question 1.5.1 asks us to label part G. Let's look at part G. If you're looking at part G here, part G it is this part and you can see that uh, it corresponds to an arrow that is showing that blood is leaving or blood is moving out of the kidney so which part does blood move um yeah which uh, which which part does blood move out of the kidney through it moves through the renal vein remember that it enters through the renal artery and lives through the renal vein so in this case it is the renal is the renal um the renal vein because you can see that blood is leaving. How did we see that blood is leaving? Please in mind here what's happening. This arrow here shows that the blood is leaving. So you can just see here that part G is showing this uh, this artery where blood is leaving the kidney. And the artery that carries blood away from the kidney is known as the renal vein. Yeah, it's a renal vein, not an artery actually. So it's the renal vein. And then now let's uh, answer part B. So now we have to label part E. You can see that part E here uh, it is something like a sac like layer. It is round like. If you can trace it back, you can notice that um, here this is coming from the kidney. So whatever comes out from the kidney and moves down here, it will be stored here at E can see that these yellow arrows which I'm drawing here are showing that something is coming away from the kidney and moving into this part E. So what actually moves away from the kidney into this part below? Remember that it's urine, right? So where is urine stored here? It is stored at the bladder. So if you know the, 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 the urinary system, you will know that that is the bladder the place that stores urine temporarily before it is uh, it is excreted. And then part C, they say we should label part F. You can see that part F is coming out of the part E, coming out of the bladder. So you can see that part, uh, part F is more like a tube transferring the urine out from the bladder to the exterior. Remember that the tube that is connected to the bladder and it trans uh, tra transports um, the urine away from the bladder is known as the urethra. So that is your urethra. And there we go. So we are done labeling the parts. So now going to 1.5.2.
1.5.2 says that we should name the blood vessel that transports deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Deoxygenated, let us mind the deoxygenated. So the blood is deoxygenated. It means that it has already lost its oxygen in the kidney. It means that the blood is leaving the kidney and going back to the heart, right? So when it moves out of the renal vein, it will be deoxygenated and moves back to the heart. So when it moves back to the heart, it moves through the inferior vena cava. So it always moves through the inferior vena cava. So inferior vena cava, remember that it carries deoxygenated blood into the heart. We have got a superior and an inferior, inferior vena cava. In this case, all of these organs are below the heart. That is why this deoxygenated blood will move through the inferior vena cava. And then part B says that uh, we should name the blood vessel that uh, that is under highest blood pressure. So the, high, the, 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 the part that has got highest blood pressure, remember that... Uh, the, the pressure is more at the renal artery than at the renal vein, right? So you can see that, remember that the renal artery enters the kidney, right? Let's just say this is your kidney. So the renal artery is actually coming from the iota. So if we say that the renal artery has got a lot of blood pressure or the blood has got a lot of pressure there because it has got a lot of waste products, it also means that the blood that is here at the iota also has got high pressure. So when this blood comes here into the kidney, it comes with high pressure. So here in this case, the blood vessel that is under the highest blood pressure, in this case, we will be referring to the iota, which is part B. That will be the iota. Do you want to get more benefits from this channel? From only 20 rands per month, you too could become a member and get exclusive benefits and even private tutoring. Click join on our channel page to find out. And then now uh, 1.5.3. 1.5.3, they say give the letter and the name. So we need to, to write the letter and then the name. You don't just write the letter and then think you're done answering the question. We need the whole two marks. So in total, it's six marks. So now we give the letter in the name of the part that collects and stores urine temporarily. Remember that urine is stored temporarily at the bladder and we have identified E to be the bladder. So in this case, we first write E, which is the letter, and then we say it's the bladder. E, and then you say it is the blood. That ends us two marks. And then part B, give the letter and the name of the blood vessel that transports oxygenated blood directly into the kidney. The blood vessel that, trans that transports oxygenated blood. In this case, our, our, our blood is oxygenated. Remember that what transports oxygenated blood directly into the into the kidney is known as the renal artery. Please do not label the iota because the iota, iota remember, it is the one that is supp supplying the renal artery. So what actually takes blood directly into the kidney is the renal artery. Here is the renal artery. So in this case, in this diagram, you can see that C is the renal artery because it is this tube which I've painted in blue that is giving or supplying the kidney with oxygenated blood. And remember that oxygenated blood has got a lot of waste products. So in this case, the answer is C, and that is a renal artery. So that's a renal artery. And then number C says, give the letter and the name of the tube that transports urine. So this one is transporting urine, and then it's transporting the urine from the kidney to part E. So it is transporting urine from the kidney. This is the kidney here and then this is part E which is the bladder. So what transports urine from the kidney to the bladder? It is part D. You can see that this is part D here. It is moving all the way to the bladder and we say those are known as the ureters. So the part um, 
or the tube that transports urine from the kidney to the bladder is known as the ureter. In that case, the label is D, and then we're going to say ureter, or you can say it's ureters, whatever. But then, yeah, this is just it about this short exercise. So I hope that you get everything correctly, um, and if you don't understand anything, I recommend you strongly to first watch our video on the urinary system because the urinary system that video explains a lot on the concepts and thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe if you would like to support us further don't forget to click the super thanks button and thank you for watching